What's going on guys? Mecha Ish here and happy Halloween! Tis the season to collect candies, wear awesome costumes, and scare the heck out of your friends. And I'm going to be taking a look at six Funko Pop figures based off the classic villains from my favorite horror movies from my childhood in Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers, Pennywise, Chucky, and Pinhead. Let's do it! Welcome back guys to a very special Halloween edition of my Funko Pop video reviews and as you can see before you I have six of the most iconic horror movie villains of all time. From Friday the 13th, we got Jason Voorhees from A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger from Halloween, Michael Myers from It, that Stephen King classic, we got Pennywise from Child's Play, we got Chucky and Hellraiser, we got Pinhead. Now Funko has put a lot of figures out and a lot of them would qualify for a special Halloween episode, but I wanted to focus on six of the most iconic ones from my childhood and some of my favorite horror movies. So as you can see, all six of these come in your standard Funko Pop styled window box packaging with a great window view of all of the characters inside. You got the Pop Movies logo on the top left and then you have the name of their respective movies nicely censored at the top of the box. And as you can see, you have their numbers on the top right of the box for their respective Wave. Scattered throughout the box, you can see little pieces of the concept artwork until you get to this side, we get that full image. So if you wanted to keep all of these figures mint in box, it's a pretty cool way to display them with the full concept artwork showing like this. Now up top, you can see from Jason to Michael Myers, you just got your collect the entire line of pop movie super stylized vinyl figures. They'll dazzle you or they'll thrill you. Now a really cool thing about the bottom three figures in Pennywise, Chucky, and Pinhead is that the back of the box displays their movie poster for when that movie actually came out. Alright, let's take these six scream kings outside of their boxes and let's see what they're all about <laughs> beep beep Richie I remember when I was in elementary school and I watched the TV miniseries it by Stephen King it creeped me out for a long time and I think Pennywise here is the cause of a lot of people's fears of clowns now Funko has done an amazing job with the likeness of Pennywise as he appeared on TV of course it's in that stylized form with the gigantic head and the lower portions a lot smaller but it is awesome and nicely done with the sculpted detail I mean take a look at his red lipstick mouth with all that sharp white teeth and the black inside painted so clean just looks so crazy looking nice job with the bright shiny white eyes you can see it's a little glossy as well and then they have the nice black outline around it eyebrows are done in that menacing position of course you got his squeaky clown nose and then you have a little bit of blue highlights over those eyes just a creepy look now for the rest of his head sculpt he appears to be Ronald McDonald on crack I mean take a look at this wild looking lightish red hair you got the line work sculpted in there and then they did a nice job with the smooth paint apps of the uh, white all across the rest of his head I mean very creepy looking now for the rest of his outfit he is loaded with a lot of colors you can see a lot of teal by the sleeves you got some purple lines nicely done and then a very bright undergarment here is the rest of his clown suit and you can see the ruffles at the bottom a lot of sculpted detail there he has those orange buttons that could have been painted a little bit fuller within the sculpt and the same goes for that vest you can see the black vest here could have been painted a little more black where you see the yellow so not the cleanest of paint jobs there but we have a nice ruffle by his neck and you can see all of the alternating uh, teal and purple colors all across that white and it goes on throughout the back now looking at his back nice job with the black paint of his vest and then you have more of that yellow for his pants and then he has straight glossy black shoes and I just love the way they sculpted his hands in that very scary looking pose and now we get to pinhead from the Hellraiser series I mean take a look at all that sculpted detail on his head you can see the ridges in between all of the spikes that they put in and then all of those individually sculpted spikes are painted in gray so it looks awesome and then you of course you have that off-white color all the way throughout you have these deep black circular eyes and then they put a little bit of gray on the outline not the cleanest of job now at the back of his head they even sculpted nicely the upper portion of his gothic like outfit now the paint could have been done a little bit fuller there you see some of the black is not finished but it still looks pretty awesome and it goes on down to that very detailed outfit has a very leathery look to it with nicely sculpted fingers holding that puzzle box there and you can see it's kind of has that off-white but a little bit of a bluish hue to it and then you go up to those sculpted fingernails which are done in almost like a darker pink great attention to the way this cube appeared in the movie I mean you can see some gold boxes got a little bit of copper it seems and then you got a lot of black as well and all those different shapes and looking at his chest you can see all the ripped portions of his outfit his skin also has 
has that bluish hue to it. Then you got some red straps going on down each side. You got some more of his blue belly under there. And then you have some accessories that are sculpted onto him. Some weapons of uh, torture, maybe. I mean, he has a lot of blood stains on them. Looks so cool. He got some saws there. Now, on his right arm, great job with the split of his costume and covering the thumb and his pinky. And you can see, again, the three fingers that are showing are, again, the same color that is throughout his body. But it is a little bit darker and inconsistent with the off-white of his head. And the rest of his robe just goes to this flat bottom piece so he can stand up very nicely while creeping out your guests. Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? And now we get to everybody's favorite good guys doll in Chucky from Child's Play. Now, I remember watching Child's Play with my brothers so many times that all of these quotes just still are in my head and they randomly come out and creep out my family. Even though I love toys and you guys know how much I love toys, if I ever saw a Chucky in the house, I would have to punch it in the face. I mean, the idea of a serial killer in Charles Lee Ray going into a doll to continue his reign of terror is a, such a creepy but awesome idea. I mean, who thinks of this though? So here we have another fantastic likeness to the way Chucky appears on film. Of course, you have that big orange hair of his, which is nice nicely sculpted. You can see the sculpt goes all the way down. Nice line work all the way through and it's all done in that bright orange. Some of the flesh tone paint has gone upwards towards his hair where it should be orange but it's not too bad. Nice orange eyebrows. Again it's pointed downward. He is ready to attack and he also has that scar which is very crisp in detail. Take a look at that. That blood red right there and then you have the stitches across. Just so awesome because Chucky has been getting beat up to this very day. They are still making movies of Child's Play which is crazy to me. And then you have the freckles in there. Just a very sinister looking Chucky and I love the good guys outfit you got his corduroys there you can see the good guys nicely done with that red paint you got his button sculpted in and painted nicely then you have all of those colors of the rainbow all across his undershirt even by his cuffs I mean how crazy is this all of the lines on his shirt and on his cuffs are nicely painted very clean detail and I love the way the cross of his straps of his corduroys are nicely painted as well in that jean blue and Chucky sneakers are also nicely sculpted and painted with the red and white the flesh tone paint being used on both of his hands match up with the shade that is used on his face and I love that sharp looking cleaver that he is about to go to work with. <laughs> Now moving up the iconic horror movie villain list, we have Michael Myers from the Halloween franchise. If you guys remember the first Halloween movie with Jamie Lee Curtis, it was a classic. I mean, every few years it seems another Halloween movie comes out. But this is such an iconic character and it's a very simple design. It's a big dude in a janitor costume with a scary Halloween mask. I love how they captured the likeness of his mask with that flat affect there. He has no emotion. You can see the big cutout, the big black eyes, and you have some brown in between. Eyebrows are pretty clean with that light brown that matches the same hair color right there and the separation between that pale gray and the brown of his crazy looking hair is nicely done now looking at his uniform great job with the sculpt again very simple you got some pouches sculpted in you got his collar some line work going down the middle and around his waist and it's all done in that kind of grayish blue he has these very wide sculpted feet all done in black so he should not take a shelf dive I love the sculpt of his fist on both hands and nice paint job as well now his right hand is holding a cleaver now you can see it it's supposed to be blood but it looks almost purplish so I don't know if he got his next victim or he just ate a jelly sandwich <laughs> Now we get to Jason Voorhees one of the top villains iconic movie bad guys scary dudes ever yeah Whatever you do, do not go to Camp Crystal Lake for the summer. It's no good, guys. I am loving this yellow hockey mask that they sculpted in and painted so well. Even some details in the paint with a little splatter of mud and dirt across. I love all of the holes sculpted in and just looks so awesome. You got the touches of red on his hockey mask. I love the composition here and the contrast between that yellow hockey mask and the gray of the rest of his head. I mean, and take a look at this. You got beneath the straps. You got little strands of hair, poor guy. Just like one, two, three, four, five gray strands of hair. And look at all of that bubbly skin at the back of his head. Take a look at the attention to detail here. They even painted the button that connects the uh, mask to the strap in silver. Nice job there on all three straps. And it leads up to this big gray ring at the back. Got one big eye and then he has his lazy eye on the right. Which has the uh, separation between the gray and the black. Which is nicely done. And his dirty and tattered look continues on with the sculpt and paint of his body here. 
I mean, take a look at that jacket, all done in that dirty brown. I love the sculpted tears here at the end of his sleeve and even at the bottom of his jacket. Awesome touch there. He got some more rips at the front of his jacket. He got some pouches sculpted in for good measure. Nice sculpted fist, and I love the pitch black gloves holding that trademark machete of his. And you can see the blood splatter, which looks so good. Now, I didn't realize Jason was showing off so much skin in these movies, but we got the dark gray skin right underneath that shirt or jacket. And then we have these lighter gray uh, pants of his also with the tear sculpted in. And then you go to these big black boots. And finally, we get to Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street. So awesome to have this figure. And take a look at the amazing sculpt job that Fungo has done here. And not just the sculpt, the paint apps are awesome. I mean, you got that burnt skin of Freddy Krueger. And then you have all that variation color between the pink. You got some orange in there. You got some brighter pink. Oh my goodness, poor guy. Again, you have the pitch black eyes, but then you have some of that lighter pink right there, right underneath. I mean, this is so awesome how well sculpted it is take a look at this all the way to the ears and all the way around to the back of the head we see a lot of ridges and line work going down you got a nicely sculpted brown hat and you can see they added some spottiness there probably to represent the flames that he was engulfed in now besides being such an amazing and memorable horror movie villain he also has so many iconic features that they sculpted so well you guys saw the burnt face but take a look at his awesome sweater of course you have the red and the green it looks so cool and then the line work all the way you got some rips at the bottom you got some sweet line work and paint job, very crisp all the way throughout. Just an awesome likeness there. And of course, Freddy's gloves. You got his claws, which are done in that gunmetal gray. Awesome job with the separation between that gunmetal and then the brown of the rest of his glove. Now his left hand has a lot of that sculpted burnt detail and is also very well painted. And of course, you have his dark brown pants leading to his glossy brown shoes, which is also nicely done. Just an awesome addition to any Funko Pop collection. Now I don't have an Exorcist figure, but I wanted to show you guys the articulation it goes all the way around so there you have it guys my video review of six of the most iconic horror movie villains from my childhood and as you probably guessed i've had some scary dreams as a kid but it's all good i think i turned out pretty well and these funko pop figures are going to make great decorations during this halloween season but i wanted to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me i hope you enjoyed this video leave a thumbs up and check out my channel for other reviews i've done and I have so many cool things coming your way so happy halloween be safe like subscribe comment and share you know what to do. Peace. <laughs>